Hi everybody, this is a look at the Nikon F which was Nikon's first SLR camera and it was produced from 1959 up till 1973 and the body itself went through slight modifications during its lifespan uh, the biggest differences though were in the finders so it's basically the same body during its production time this particular body is from 1966 I'm going to run through its functions and features and then I'll look at the finder and also point out the differences on the finders and show you some other accessories as well. <clears throat> so to start with, looking from the top of the camera, you have the film rewind crank and lever for rewinding the film and around the base of that is a accessory shoe socket uh, which was used for flashes. Here is the focusing screen of course which can be released using this little button at the back and it operates the little spring catch inside as you can see and that same principle also releases the uh, finder the right here is the shutter dial and the shutter speed is ranged from one second all the way up to one thousandth of a second and you also add a B setting bulb and a T setting and on the T setting when you fire the shutter it kept the shutter open until you change the dial to another setting and on B the shutter remains open while you hold the button in until it's released. Just ahead of that is a little window and this was mainly for the uh, synchronization settings of the shutter with the different flashes because uh, during the early production of this there was bulb flashes rather than electronic flashes and to change the setting on that you lift up this uh, little dial that goes around the shutter dial and you turn that to the different settings you can see in that window and you refer to the manual with regard to which setting you would use for different bulbs but for electronic flash you leave it on the FX setting this is the shutter release button itself and it's got a little red dot which I'll tell you what function that was for around the shutter button you have a little selector for A or R and A is for advance which is the normal advance of the film taking the, when you're taking a film and when you get to the end or for multiple exposures you can set it to R uh, which releases the, the sprocket inside of course so you can rewind the film the film advance lever itself which incorporates the frame counter uh, which resets to uh, below zero when you open the back and then you wind it on two frames before it gets to zero and then starts counting this is just a little reminder to tell you how many frames the film has got uh, 36 or 20 was the settings then obviously now it's usually 24 or 36 <coughs> excuse me so to advance the film just move the uh, shutter advance lever all the way around and release and you can fire the shutter and uh, it does have a little standoff position as well so when it returns you can stand off so it's quickly to then advance to the next one and you can set that say to 60 of a second fires the, flat, uh, the shutter looking to the front you have a self timer so when the shutter is cocked you set the self timer using the little arrow at the bottom against the little dots which are for 3, 6 and 10 seconds up to the top and you press the button and the self timer counts down 
and fires the shutter after that period of time. So it's rough estimate of course. Uh, here is the depth of field preview button which operates the uh, lever inside the lens mount and you can use that for depth of field preview when you're looking through the viewfinder. It does have a mirror lockup feature slightly different on the F because you first have to move the dot up to the red dot there by turning it that way and you first have to advance the film and fire a frame before the actual mirror does lock up so that's unusual and then the mirror can be released after firing a frame so if you took another frame fire the shot and then the mirror can be brought down Standard F mount, of course, or the first F mount, I should say. Very basic. Um, you've got a lens mounting button here. You press in and it pushes down on that pin to let you mount the lens. They usually do have a nameplate here. On this one, it's been removed, which just says Nikon. You've got a sync socket for flash. Eye lugs for fitting some uh, a, a strap on the back. Say so very basic on the back, not much to see at all actually. Underneath, you have the open and close lever for the back and a tripod socket. And this is just a reminder of what film speed you've got loaded into the camera. What you usually do is set the speed against the red dot for colour film or the black if it's black and white film, just to let you know which film's loaded. So to release the back, you lift up the open close lever, turn it anti-clockwise, and then the back basically slides off. It's not an open swing open back, it slides fully off. Uh, the rewind crank doesn't pull up at all, stays in that position so you slot the film cartridge into that and wind it on. Uh, this particular model only has one slot in the advanced sprocket, the later ones had four but you put the film into there obviously and wind it on, firing the shutter a couple of times to advance it to the first frame obviously with the back closed Back, back on, it slides up and closes. Now the finder, on this one I've got, it came with a TN finder and say this is the main difference in these cameras during its production with the finders. The original finder was a basic eye level finder uh, which was shaved shaped like a pyramid shape and it did not have any metering in, in it at all but it did give full 100% coverage so basic finder we needed a, a external exposure meter for that after that model came the first photomic head which I say they're all very similar look to the photomic heads uh, the first styling had a uh, it did include a light meter of course and the light meter was a little window on the side here and there was a, a couple of variations of that where you removed a cover or slide, slided a, a metal disc up to let the meter read the light so it basically the, it read the light through the meter on the finder itself the batteries fit in through this little opening here so you can do that and fit in two button cell batteries. So the first head, which is called Photomic, wasn't through the lens metering, but it did have a uh, say that light meter built in. The next one, which was called the Photom Photomic T, was the first meter uh, on any camera with a removable finder that had through the lens metering. 
The next model after that was the TN, which is this model. And in this version, you have a battery check feature by pressing that little button. And you watch if the needle goes to the center or further, shows the battery is OK. And it also includes center weighted metering from uh, this finder on. The final version was a FTN, which is the model after this, which uh, had extra, um, you could see the shutter speed in the, in, through the viewfinder window in the, through the, in the finder and it also had a uh, extra prongs on the front to fasten it more securely to the camera body and also it was the first Nikon head to include semi-automatic indexing of the lens uh, and this photomic head and the early ones uh, you have to set the aperture of the lens onto the ASA dial on the top which I'll show you shortly but they all the photomic heads use this prong here for reading the um, lens changing on the aperture and that slides obviously with the with the lens as you turn the uh, lens aperture so it can adjust the meter accordingly <clears throat> so uh, I'll just show you how the finder fits on oh obviously the shutter when you put the finder on it covers the shutter but you get a replica of the shutter dial here on the finder itself and it engages on the shutter with a little pin on the top of the shutter dial engaged in the hole onto the finder. So to fit the finder on, just drop it in like that and it clicks into place and that's the finder fitted and then you rotate the shutter and you see that drop down then and click and it's engaged into the shutter dial at the bottom so you can now see the shutter speeds on the front of the finder there. So with this one <clears throat> you have to set the lens maximum aperture on the dial itself so obviously it depends on what lens you've got. This is a 1.4 pre-AI lens which was around at the same time this camera. Mount the lens, you line up the black dot with the black dot on the mount and turn it to it locks on. To engage the meter, and you can see the pin in the finder engages with the uh, lug on the lens itself, which obviously adjusts then the meter so it knows how to read the meter inside the finder. And as I say, this lens is a 1.4, so you would ensure that you've set the correct aperture number 1.4 in this case against the film speed which is 200 ASA in this case on the top of this dial here that obviously syncs the uh, metering correctly with the settings on the camera so to take a picture you switch on the light meter by pressing this little button in the side the light meter comes on and then you can adjust the aperture or the uh, shutter speed until the needle is in the middle and that will show the correct exposure you can wind on and take a picture As I mentioned about the little red dot earlier and that can be used for very uh, primitive multiple exposure I'll just show you that with the back off. What you would do is you would take a picture and then if you want to do a, a double exposure on that frame move this dial to the R for the rewind position and then you actually lift up rewind lever and the idea is you rewind the film slightly back into the cartridge and as you're doing that 
it turns the sprocket in the back obviously which turn, turns the little red dot on the shutter button itself so you rewind it back until the dot does a full uh, 360 degree turn and in principle that uh, puts it back at a full frame so then you set it then to A for advance advance frame again and in theory it should be on the same frame for a double exposure but obviously uh, it wasn't very precise obviously let's try that on off <coughs> I'll show you a few um, accessories and things you can fit to this camera. Uh, first of all, this is a AS1 flash unit coupler, which allows this and the F2 actually, very same uh, mounting accessory shoe, to use a standard electronic flash, whether it be Nikon or some other make. You just basically slide that on and turn that around and then you can put a standard electronic flash unit on there and uh, it works very well. <coughs> also you can fit this unit which is a Nikon Speedlight 7 SB7E uh, which came out during the F2 period but obviously it's compatible with this camera as well and this doesn't need an accessory it's actually got a proper mounting foot for the Nikon F or F2 and you can simply slide that onto the camera shoe I should say Turn that to its shorts. Switch on the flash. You set the flash sync, sync to 60 of a second, of course. You set the ASA speed on the top of the flash to what setting you want. Uh, so it's 200 ASA. And then you need to set the lens aperture according on the shooting distance you want. I've set f 5.6 or 11 and set the button accordingly on the front, so we'll use f5.6 in this case so set 5.6 on the lens flash is, you've got a flash ready light on the flash so you can take the picture so that works well with the Nikon F and this particular flash uh, can be rotated up to 90 degrees or you can rotate it again that way so you get a central uh, flash on the camera itself let's remove that now as regards lenses it does require a lens with a prong on the lens which are these pre-AI lenses or AI, AI lenses or AIS lenses at the prong as well like this um, this is a 1.4 AI lens which has the same prong, slightly different styling but this was made for the later cameras where it read the um, f-stop through the viewfinder so it needed uh, more gaps in that to read that so it, it would allow more light through but basically the same principle out the lens and it engages with the prong in the finder and then again you just have to make sure you set the minimum aperture on the ASA dial in this case it's the same because it's 1.4 now on the say the last finder which they made the FTN uh, you don't need to do that basically it's a similar feature to the F2 in that case where you move the aperture ring fully one way and then the other and it will semi-automatically basically sync the um, maximum aperture of the lens to the metering now I so say you can actually fit any lens with a prong this is a an AFD lens which wouldn't normally have a prong but you can fit one to it 
and uh, obviously you're not going to get autofocus in with this but it will work just the same where you can mount lens it will engage in the prongs on the lens and then in this case the minimum aperture is 3.5 so you need to set 3.5 on this little dial which is there against the ASA speed of the film and you're ready to go you can use this lens fully, that's a 28 to 85 AFD lens and that'll work fine with this camera with that prong on uh, obviously you can't use uh, G lenses or anything without the aperture ring you can't uh, make any settings on it of course and if you fit a lens with uh, vibration reduction or anything like that obviously that's not going to work uh, so there you go, that's the Nikon F I hope you've enjoyed this look at it and um, it's a very nice camera, very old, say one of the first cameras, this one's uh, a pretty good example from 1966 and uh, you can pick them up, the early ones with the uh, the eye level prism tend to be more expensive and the black ones even more so uh, but it's a nice camera to uh, have a play with film with and uh, I'd recommend you get one, very good quality build all mechanical, not much to go wrong, very robust so there you go, that's the Nikon F thank you for watching